Rudy Giuliani, who once served as former President Trump's personal attorney, he's been ordered to appear before a Georgia special grand jury. This is part of the ongoing criminal investigation into Trump's efforts to overturn the 2020 election results in Georgia, where Giuliani claimed there was widespread voter fraud after watching edited surveillance video of ballots being tabulated at State Farm Arena in Atlanta. ABC's Zareen Shah joins me now with more. So this has been an allegation that was debunked by Georgia Republican officials, right? The Secretary of State Brad Raffensperger, the Governor Brian Kemp, and the people of Georgia recognize that their 2020 election was free and fair. But what's this grand jury going to do with Giuliani? Hi, good, yeah, good afternoon, Terry. They hope to learn anything they possibly can. Look, Giuliani was Trump's personal lawyer. He was one of the closest people to him during this time, and he was leading the legal effort. So the big question now is how were Trump and his allies involved in Georgia and potentially meddling in that election there? We know the big one, right? Trump called Georgia Secretary of State. He asked him to find 11,000 votes. But what else? Well, there, were, there are 16 electors who voted for Trump in that state, who falsely voted for Donald Trump when Biden actually won the election in Georgia. So we know right now that Giuliani is supposed to show up in court on August 9th, but he was already supposed to show up in court in New York on this very topic earlier this month, and he didn't. So we'll have to see what happens. And, and Giuliani had appeared before the Georgia lawmakers in December 2020 as he was kind of barnstorming the country. Uh, with uh, that kind of road show going before various legislatures with his theories of why the election was stolen, rejected by those Republican-controlled legislators. What's, how is this going to be different when, when and if he does comply with subpoena, uh, Giuliani goes to Georgia again now? Yeah, I and mean, I think the big question is, is it going to be different, right? This is a year and a half later. We know that he showed up in front of Georgia lawmakers back then. He gave testimony. He gave witnesses. He apparently gave evidence of voter fraud, even though there wasn't any. That was disproven very soon afterward. But he kept claiming that there was. So is this going to be different, Terry? We don't know. We'll have to see. And this all comes a day before the next January 6th committee hearing, the fallout from those deleted Secret Service text messages. So what's the latest on that story? I think a lot of us are just scratching our head. How did this happen? How did so many texts get deleted? We know that we know when they were subpoenaed, right? They were subpoenaed on January 16th. The ones that were subpoenaed were for January 5th and January 6th. And then all of a sudden, there was this migration of text messages that was apparently scheduled to take place, and that was for January 25th. So the big question now is what happened to all those text messages? Can you get any of them back? So far, just one was handed over, but there is, of course, hope that potentially more can be found a lot of conspiracy theories out there but but when it comes to government the, the screw-up is probably more likely than, than the conspiracy in general as a general but two, two more aides now from the Trump White House are expected to testify before the House committee tomorrow in its uh, what might be its final hearing who are they what's what's this gonna look like yeah, so two former White House officials. One of them is Matthew Pottinger. He was the national security, uh, he was on Trump's National Security Council. He resigned the very day after January 6th. And then you have the Deputy Press Secretary. Her name is Sarah Matthews. She was under Kayleigh McEnany. She resigned just hours after the attack happened. She said that she was just really disturbed by seeing the attack. She believes in a peaceful transfer of power. And she also spoke out about Cassidy Hutchinson. She showed her support for Hutchinson. Terry, that testimony that Hutchinson gave a few weeks ago, very, very hard to forget. Incredibly powerful testimony. And we'll see how these two former White House officials do tomorrow as well. Terry? Exactly. And it is worth noting that the overwhelming number of witnesses in these hearings have been Republicans in the state level and in Trump's own government. Zareen yeah. Shah, thanks very much for that. Thanks. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.